I'm going to start looking at the um, the very basics of editing. Now, for people that start editing, I usually tell them to have one tab open with the map feature so you can start looking at the, the tags. Before I start editing, editing this, if you want to, please feel free to sign up for OpenStreetMap, get yourself uh, an ID, it's all free. Uh, you just need an email address and then you can start editing. I'm going to be editing through the, the web portal at the moment called Potlatch. And all I'm going to do is click edit. So this is, the, this is where people first start thinking about uh, doing editing. Uh, before they actually start using a little bit more uh, professional programs. As we can see, as I zoom in here, I can see choose particular ways, I'm highlighting it. And if I wanted to, I could grab hold of one of these nodes and just drag it to the side. And, uh, or if I wanted to, you can see that the background that we're using here is on this particular version is from Bing imagery. We got, uh, we're allowed to use Bing imagery, Microsoft Bing, they gave us the permission to be able to trace from their imagery. I mean, they've, they're kind of trying to do a little bit of catch up with uh, Google Maps, but uh, so they get, allowed us to use that. And if I wanted to add this little house in, I'd just start clicking. I'm going to make a, an area here. Then I want to add a tag. I'm going to use the advanced one. I'm just going to add, say, something building. Yes. And that's uh, and that would the next time that I save this, I'm going to save this in this particular instance. The comment. Um, if I was to want wanted to, uh, if I believe that that was a shot, then what I could also do is I could drag one of these nodes across and that just like adds a shop supermarket so that's an, an easy way of doing that so there's lots of different options there's all these different uh, supermarkets wine shops cycle shops or down here is the, there's the pubs and the cafes schools police fire fire stations etc so it's uh, the, this particular uh, editor has been made to be nice and easy I can change the background style to the open street, the open data street view, which was given to us. Well, we're allowed to use it by from the ordnance survey. You see that it's quite. It's not as detailed as the Bing satellite imagery, but there is information on there that we can use. Coming up, you can see the houses. And we can see where the forests are. We can see it's very useful for streams um, and pointing out where post offices and uh, schools are. Although, I mean, everything's not necessarily up to date. What I'm just doing now is I've just switched on the GPS data, and I don't know if you can see it, but these green lines are where somebody has driven around and then they've uploaded where their uh, where where they've driven, so we can see that the the GPS line here, this 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 road isn't quite as smooth as kind of what you'd expect it. I'll put it over to Bing imagery and see if it that uh, it looks like that uh, the GPS is a little bit better than the, the than the track. So I can just change that and save it. 
if we've got enough time a little bit later on then I'll get uh, and anybody who's not done that particular this kind of stuff before I'm quite happy to uh, set it aside and walk you through editing the first time if you actually do edit something if I go back to, to viewing it it'll start coming it'll start appearing on the map um, anything from within five minutes to it will definitely be there by the end of the day. Uh, it's quite nice when it uh, actually appears five, five minutes later, but the, uh, they are rendering the whole of the world, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen. Okay, so that, that's the very, very much the, um, the beginning of, the, of what we can do with the editing. The trying to sell um, OpenStreetMap in Scotland is actually quite difficult because the as the the sell the idea of the concept is difficult because our maps are really really good. But I'm going to show you a couple of places where this information is really really useful. If you go to Nairobi in Kenya, then one of the things, uh, there's a huge great big slum outside Nairobi called Kibera and, and all the maps that they had in Kenya, it was not even recognized as a place. They try not to even name it uh, because it was such an embarrassment. One of the biggest slums in Edinburgh. And there are a group of volunteers from OpenStreetMap who decided that they wanted to start uh, creating a map and they started creating the first ever map of Kibera. So this is a slum of 250,000 people and it's starting to show the schools, where the water sources are, fuel, um, toilets, uh, uh, hospitals, and they actually, for the first time ever, we've actually got to see what is a, a map of what's inside the slum. And they've done this by walking around with GPS devices and adding in the data. I, although the, I'm not sure if that, I know that that particular project is ongoing slowly at the moment, but if I go to Dar es Salaam in Tanz, Tanzania, there's this red patch starts here. This is Tanadil, which is a very large slum in Dar es Salaam, and this project is actually ongoing at the moment. They are doing it right now as we speak. They're trying to uh, create a map of this this slum. So it's really uh, so that'll be really fascinating to watch. One of my pet uh, uh, projects at the moment is that if we go to your herd of. Um, Dadab, uh, which is the refugee camp in in Kenya, where everybody's talking about the uh, there's 300,000 refugees. Now, at the moment, the, there's actually three very large parts of uh, Dadab, the different refugee camps, and this is the best map that we've got of uh, Dadab. Uh, I know that we've just recently managed to get some satellite imagery uh, available from the UN and some we've managed to get the first uh, list of uh, villages in Somalia. So we're actually creating a map of Jada, but the fact that it's been there for 20 years and there isn't a map I think is actually really uh, very embarrassing really for uh, that we haven't, if we're thinking about doing aid in that, that place then uh, we need to have a map for long-term development. So to do that, we've got some data sets which we've got given by the UN, and we're bringing them in. But of course, we can't use that, use uh, potlatch. It's just too basic. So we're going to go on to, uh, after people start using potlatch, they move on to uh, Jossum, which is a, another map editor. To use Jossum, you need to have Java installed, it is Java for OSM. 
and this is without it. Uh, I'm not changing any of the, the settings behind Jossum. What I'll do is I'll just have a look at. Let's take. I'm just going to select an area. So this is a small, a small area that I'm downloading from the uh, OSM server. You can download the entire planet file uh, if you want. Uh, you better have some decent, uh, hefty technology behind it. Uh, I think it's about 10 gig at the moment. Compressed. Compressed. Then that goes up to about 100, well, 50 gig, 35 gig. When it's uncompressed? Yeah, it's, I think, yeah, it's close to 1,000. I'm not sure of what you'd actually use, like what project you use for the entire world. But, but anyway, so this would actually, for those of you who have done a little bit of editing before, this might start looking a little bit more familiar. Jossum, so when people are start getting, they, they get introduced to OpenStreetMap via Potlatch, which was the first editor, <coughs> but Jossum is usually the second one that they start to, to use. And the, the reason for that is that the it's just a lot easier to be able to, instead of going piecemeal, you can actually start doing things on uh, a much larger scale. You can start searching the data, um, you can start renaming, renaming the data uh, en masse, if you're careful, and uh, you can start uh, making sure that the, uh, <coughs> you've just got a, a few more tools available. So what I'm going to do is say, for example, this building here, if, if it was a little bit uh, skew width, I can hit, oops, I can hit a button and it will make it all nice and angular. Or if I was to want to make something, a little bit more circular, then I just grab hold of uh, the lines and hit another button, and makes it nice and uh, make it nice and round. If I was to choose a building, you can see here on the right hand side, here are the, the tags. So if I wanted to add another tag. And a lot of the, the tags will get filled in for me and stuff like that. There's a, it also comes with a whole selection of plugins. What it allows you to do is take a building, say for example, and then section it into 20 different terraced houses. Um, or it allows you to use the plugins to be able to walk around uh, lakes to make things a little bit easier to be able to add in that data. Uh, with this, with Jossum, we can also add imagery in the background. So I'm going to add the Bing satellite imagery so that I can uh, reference what I'm actually uh, something against. It doesn't necessarily need to be Bing imagery. Um, we can see what the OpenStreetMap map actually looks like. 